All right, so let's get to the let's get to the main video of the show. We finally have gotten to this Kirk Franklin video. Uh, let me share the screen. Kirk Franklin had some very interesting comments on Cam Newton's show, um, and we're going to take a look at him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I need I need y'all opinion on this one. All right. I believe that marriage has been weaponized in Western Christianity. Giving has been weaponized in Western Christianity. Sexuality Mm. has been weaponized. For example, any woman listening to this can attest in our culture, don't be no 30, 35 year old single black woman and go to the family reunion. All the older women are gonna do nothing, they're gonna look at you and wonder why you not married. Where your man at? Where your kids at? Like it's a prerequisite for identity and value, that if you don't have a man, if you don't have kids, that something about you is broken. Mm. Do you understand how dysfunctional? And I'm trying to do my best of playing the entire video. Then we'll go back and go through the video and then I'll add my comments. These messages are. And how we super spiritualize these messages. Paul said, but marriage is a necessary distraction. I have many friends that, that, that were in ministry at church, and the church has told them, if you're going to be in ministry, you can't be single. We're not going to let you work with the youth ministry if you're single. You can't do this. If- I believe that marriage has been when you're single. And so what people do, they quickly get married, thinking that they're fulfilling God's will for their lives, but they are, they are, they are fulfilling man's dogma. You can be single and be used by God. You can be single and have purpose. Being married is not a prerequisite for God's hand on your life. It is not, but we've weaponized it. And then crucify people mm. when my camera at. Right and there. Then, and then crucify people when those same marriages don't. Damn. Single and I'm going to go back to the beginning. What are y'all initial thoughts on this? What are y'all initial thoughts? This is how I look at it. And this is this is a video that Ant sent over. So Ant and I had a, a bit of a conversation about it, but obviously wanted to share it with y'all, have a bigger combo on it. When I first listened to it, and I do have to acknowledge, I, I, I come into it with a little bit of skepticism. Skepticism. Um, y- y'all know how I feel about some of these pastors. And so Ant wrote... <laughs> Why are you speaking on this, Kirk? What's the agenda here? I always believe going into it that these pastors or a lot of these people getting up here, they have a particular agenda. They have an agenda. And when I hear Kirk Franklin talking about women don't need to be married or they can still serve God, I just ask why? Like, why are you saying this? Like, why do you feel the need to get on board to say this? Why do you feel the need to let, let's go through the video? Let's go through the actual entire video and then I'll stop it at, and address every single point. In Western Christianity, giving has been weaponized in Western Christianity. Sexuality mm. has been weaponized. For example, any woman listening to this can attest in our culture. Don't be no 30, 35 year old single black woman and go to the family reunion. All the older women are going to do nothing. They're going to look at you and wonder why you where not married. Where your man at? Is there anything wrong with that? That's a serious question that I have. Is there anything wrong with that? The only thing that I would say that's not that's that's wrong with it is the fact that those women that are looking at you that's that particular way, were they guiding you and coaching you along and and raising you to become a wife? And the same thing works on the other side when it comes to becoming a husband. But he specifically decided to just address this with women. And he made the analogy. Now, you could say that he's talking about men and women, but the particular analogy that he chose was just addressing women. And it comes across like very Steve Harvey-ish. You feel what I'm saying? It's like there's a pattern of these older men that are trying to appease and trying to market themselves and become cooler to the younger crowd, especially to the younger women. Let me be very very specific the younger crowd of women trying to make themselves look cool, trying to say what makes women feel better, but maybe not necessarily telling them exactly what is needed. And 
that's the question that I have with this. What's the agenda? We have enough. I mean, you you look around, the entire society tells women that they don't need to be married. The, in, the society pushes women to be more successful in corporate America, to define your level of success in that way, rather than more so in a whatever your relationship role is or whatever your your role is within your family. So if we already have all these other different factors trying to convince our our women that they don't need to be married that they shouldn't prioritize being married why would kirk franklin say this like why are are you trying to increase your audience among a particular demographic specifically you said black women so here you have and and answer me this does this convince women or men he's talking about women so i'm talking about women does this make women want to work on themselves to attract more of the energy that they're looking for in a family or in a significant other that they <clears throat> would be able to grow a family with. That's the question that I have. If you're listening to this as a young woman, do you are, are you inspired to say, you know what, let me look internally because all change starts internally, right? So if I was talking to a group of young men, it would be the same thing. It would be the same thing. And Queez wrote, I took it as don't, don't rush to get married without the work. See, and maybe, and Queez took it a different way than I took it. When he says, and I'm going to tell you why I took it. Let's keep, let's, when he's talking about you can still serve God's purpose, or he said something similar to that, if you're not married, he didn't say that what you're, what, how you took it, Queez. He didn't say <clears throat> until the end, oh, you know, people rush into these marriages and whatnot. He didn't say all these things um, until afterwards. The examples that he's using, he kind of leaves that at the end. Now, obviously, this is just a clip. So I I'm just asking from afar, like, how do people take this? How do people take this? If this was said, if you told a group of, let, let's, let's flip it a little bit. If you told a group of young men this same thing, what do you think it's going to lead to? especially with us living during times where we're not getting, like, we're not getting married. We're not having kids. If you told a young man this, would he be more inclined to say, oh, no, nah, I right, then shoot, I don't need to get married. I don't need to have a family. I don't need to have, have kids. I don't need to have any of this stuff. Or would he say, oh, yeah, Kirk Franklin said that, oh, I'm going to get on my purpose. I'm going to make sure that I'm you know, trying to become the man that I would want to become to lead a family, which would it make you do? And Ant just asked the question. He said, better question. Why is he on this platform? What is he promoting? Is this an attempt to garner attention? You know, it, it's always going to be that. It's always going to be that, in my opinion. Um, but let's keep let's keep going with the video, and we'll point out some of the things that, you know, we, we may or may not have had issues with. What your kids at? Like, it's a prerequisite for identity and value, that if you don't have a man, if you don't have kids, that something about you is broken. Mm. If you don't have a man, if you don't have kids, then something about you is broken. I guess that leads us to a question where, I mean, does that mean that something is broken? If you don't, if, if and let's not take it, let's, if you don't have a man or as a man that doesn't have a woman. I, I, I personally, I think about that all the time. I think about that all the time. And when you get to a certain age, at least this is how it was for me, you start to question certain things. And I don't think that it's wrong to question those things. When you're pointing the finger and like Kui said, you know, refocusing on looking, looking internally reflecting on like where are some things that I can go that I can do better at if I'm if I keep having these situations that are, aren't working then I'm the common factor in those things what can I improve what can I work on how can I do better to attract how can I do better to put out a certain energy that's going to bring a certain energy back uh, I, I think that ju I'm just confused because in a time where we all say that Whenever we talk about solutions, we all talk about whether it's marriage, government marriage, or if it's just, you know, people coming together in a relationship, partnership, whatever you want to call it. We all say that that's the solution to a lot of these problems that we um, encounter or see other people in the community encountering across the board. 
So if we all see that this is an issue, then I just don't understand. I'm just getting a, 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 like I said, maybe it's just my bias towards Kirk Franklin. But as I'm hearing this, I'm hearing somebody trying to convince or, or saying certain things that are going to convince people to consult with their convenience of already not wanting to get married, already not wanting to have kids. And this just be the thing that, oh, yeah, Kirk Franklin said we ain't got to I ain't got to have kids to, you know, I ain't got to, you know, have no kids to serve God's purpose. I don't got to. That's just kind of what I what I hear. But let's keep looking. Um, Let's keep looking at it a little bit more. And I want to make sure that I'm trying to keep up with the chat. I'm trying to. And um, all right. So Lucille wrote, you got to be ready for marriage and children and not doing it because someone else wants you to do it based on your age. It's a good point. And I, and I don't think that I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't obviously don't think that you should rush into anything based on age. But look what happens to us. Look what happens in our society right now, especially in America. We don't we don't prioritize what we don't prioritize marriage. So therefore, and maybe we're not going to see the results of it for a couple generations, but us not prioritizing marriage, I look around, and especially when I compare my generation to my parents' generation, all of them were married, had families at our, at this age, and I look around at my friend group, and there's a, a good amount of us, but there's also a good amount of us that are not there. You know, when I sit down and I'm kicking it with my homegirls and stuff, and I see you know, the situations that they're in, it's almost like we're, we're just a bit behind. And then what ends up happening, and I'll ask you this, how about this? If we're not preparing for marriage, especially for our young ladies, if we're not preparing our young ladies for marriage in their 20s, then what's going to end up happening in their 30s? That's when you actually, ladies, you tell me, I would assume that that's when the pressure starts to come in. And it's like, damn, I'm 35. And now I'm just realizing like, oh, I should have actually prioritized, you know, having a family, um, finding a significant other. But I was prioritizing, you know, my corporate job. I was prioritizing having fun. I was prioritizing just enjoying it and kicking it with my girls. I was prioritizing having hot girl summers, whatever that may be. And then I get to the point where I'm 35 and now I'm looking at life where it's like, oh, just from a biological standpoint, like now my time is ticking. Now I have even more pressure on me. So now with this added level of pressure, am I going to make a decision that's best for me or am I going to make a decision that, oh, I just got to hurry up and get married because I only have a short window to have kids. So my issue is just why not just work on preparing us more to have to have more healthier relationships. So therefore, less women are going to the cookout unmarried, less men are going to the cookout unmarried. But I just I just feel that. You know, we sit we sit back and we wonder like, oh, just why aren't people getting married? Well, we're not raised to get married. We're not raised to understand how to have relationships, how to communicate with each other. And most of us, what is it up to 70 something percent? Most of us are growing up in a single parent household. So it's not even something that we see. Let me. Um. So Ant wrote there are many factors that may result in you being single at any age. It does not have to mean you're broken or unwanted, et cetera. Life just happens. That's a good point. Sometimes life does just happen. But me looking at it, I'm always going to try to look at it and figure out what am I doing? Like, how can I better impact the situation? If this is a particular result that I'm looking to achieve, then how can I figure out on my end what I can do differently, what I can improve upon? Um, any of these different things, what self-help books I need to read, do I need to go get therapy, all these different things to put myself in the best position to have that family. Um, but obviously it'd be a, a, a good time, a healthy time, not a toxic relationship. So I, I, I just don't know if what he's saying, if it, if it brings a positive, uh, if it shines a light in a, in a way that we need to shine the light on it, which is saying like, okay, the reason why, let's get to the root of the problem. Why are people showing up to the cookouts, you know, unmarried? Auntie, grandma, why don't y'all, did y'all raise, did y'all raise us to have relationships? Did y'all equip us to have relationships? Or did you push us to do things that did not prioritize being in a relationship and having a family? So let's keep going with the video. Do you understand how dysfunctional these messages are yeah. and how we super spiritualize these messages. Paul said, but marriage is a necessary distraction. Mm. I have many. I don't know. what I know Cam made a, a, a big um, 
uh on that one. But I, I don't really know what Cam made that noise for. Um, I'm not as familiar with that, with, with Paul saying that marriage is a necessary distraction. Um, Cam seemed to just respond to the distraction, in my opinion, based on how I'm receiving it, that it's a distraction. But why is it a necessary distraction? And it almost reminds me, when you say marriage is a necessary distraction, think about this. And I'm going to go a little bit off on a tangent right here. Do you know that when, think, think about when you're in college or you have a, a high school girlfriend or a girl's in a relationship in high school and college. When a, when a lady is in a relationship in high school and college, they may feel like they're missing out on a lot. But if a woman is not in a relationship, in my opinion, they're more likely to be doing things that may not put them in the best light when it comes to um, being prepared to have a significant other. I would say that a man being in a relationship, say it prevents you from being in certain situations as well, prevents us from being in certain situations that may not be the best situations that we need to be in. And I'm, I'm walking on eggshells a little bit here uh, because I don't want the conversation to get into something totally different. But when you're not in a relationship, you are more likely to entertain and deal with a lot more men. So when you say a necessary distraction, perhaps a relationship always is a necessary distraction. Because what it's distracting you from is all those other things that don't necessarily serve that family purpose that a lot of us are looking for. Or let's say when you're not in a relationship, you're more likely to act on temptations that may not be best for you that may not align with your morals, that may not align, align with your principles and values. But let me, um, yeah, that, that necessary distraction, answer necessary distraction, I'll have to look into that one. It, when I first heard it, I wasn't really sure how to take it, but that's kind of what just came to mind as I was having the conversation with you. Like when you're in a relationship with a girl or a guy, you know, in high school, in college, they have a lot less time to be out here hunting or getting hunted on by you know a lot of other people now it's still going to happen but it's at least going to distract you from maybe acting on a lot of those things that you otherwise would um aunt wrote that's interesting i won't say we shouldn't prioritize marriage i will say our generation does not know how to prioritize marriage they think prioritizing marriage means rushing to find a partner i agree 100 percent. i agree and alana said hey aunt, hey lucia i agree 100 percent with that and we're just not taught it we're just not taught it which is strange because you would think that if something was important that we would be taught these things. Why are we not taught this from a young age? Why, why do we go to school and we learn how to put a condom on a banana or um, look at some of these strange books that are now in the libraries, but we can't just have conversations with kids about simple things that are not vulgar, but actually having communication with a significant other. Why don't we have certain classes on that? A lot of times, why don't our parents teach us it? If we're, if we're fortunate to have two parents in the household, then we can see it. But for a lot of us that aren't, we never actually see and get to learn how to interact with the significant other until we're actually in it. Um, Alana wrote, perhaps men and women are so busy keeping up with surviving the daily that it distracts us from planning for our future. Know what you want, have a plan, but be flexible and be weary of distraction. That's a that's a good point as well, Alana. And I think that that's something that a lot of us struggle with. We can't afford to have kids. I was I was talking to somebody on Saturday. We did a program. A shout out to Amir. He put together his, the Kawaja Foundation. They put together um, a resume writing and interviewing kind of training workshop. And one of the fathers and, and mothers, they were there with their two kids. And one of the kids went to, is go, he goes to FDU and the other kid, I forget where he's getting ready to go, but the FDU, Fairleigh Dickinson in Teaneck, Hackensack, right around the corner, it costs $40,000. $40,000, how can you even afford to have a kid? Their college, like, I, it's insane to me. When you think about the inflation that's going on, when you think about how much just groceries cost just for us when we go to the store, 
in our minds, we're like, yo, how could I even think about taking care of a child? Especially if we're not in a relationship. Now, in a relationship, in my opinion, that's one of the best ways to save money. Um, you're you're able to share things. That's what's great about having a, a quote unquote partner. Now I'm getting now I've been saying this partner word a lot. Um, but yeah, so Queez wrote, we are, we are being programmed not to come together and have strong families. That's my point, Queez. That's, that's what I just don't understand. Like, why is there an emphasis on making people feel better about not being married rather than actually coaching people and guiding people to become husband material, to become wife material? And Lucille saying the same thing. All right, so I think we agree on it. Lucille wrote, young people have to be prepared for marriage. Um, Aunt wrote, we are not taught these things because it does not support the agenda of capitalist America for African-American or black people. Um, I, I would agree. I would agree. And, and you know what? An interesting video that I saw the other day, they were talking about the school system. And there were two different gentlemen talking. It was on Anton Daniel's show. And Anton was, was having a back and forth with a gentleman that was saying that the school system, the education system is very important because that is what is supposed to raise our kids. That is what's supposed to teach them the lessons and prepare them for adulthood. And Anton was sitting back saying like, no, that's what a parent's job is to do. You can't rely on an education system to do that. And when we, we've had the conversation before on here, the intent of the education system, what I think Anne is alluding to, even in the beginning where I'm not sure if it was the Rockefeller, I forget what family that started the education system, but it was just to create and train employees. That's it. That's it. It's babysitting. Let's just be real. All right. So Alana, um, Aunt wrote, Alana, I'd like to challenge your thought. I think if someone's in survival mode, it's more of a reason to take the necessary steps to build a good foundation for self which is steps towards marriage. Yeah, I, 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 and, I, and I see both sides. I see both sides, but I think that it's, it, we're not taught, to your point, Aunt, we're not taught even the benefits that come with marriage. We're not taught it. We're not taught like, oh, these are the benefits. I mean, maybe not to say that you should only do it for the benefits, but we clearly see sometimes the, 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 the reasons to not want to get married. That's dangled in front of us all the time. So maybe if we saw some of the positives, just like it's nice to see positive relationships, just two people having a good, solid relationship, just being around them, it's a good feeling. So maybe understanding more of the benefits that come along with it and pushing some of those benefits and highlighting those will help people get more on board and help people invest and do some self-reflection like Queez was talking about earlier in the show, just to make sure that we're doing everything we can to prepare ourselves for marriage, whether being, you know, a husband or a wife. Um, Got to get those 529 for your kids. Um, what's a 529? An American racism equals classism. In America, racism, that's a good point, bro. Uh, Aunt wrote, oh, oh, that's a quiz wrote. That's a, that's a savings plan. All right. So we'll watch the rest of this video and then we're going to move on to the next one. Any Speaking of Steve Harvey. That, that, that were in ministry at church. And the church has told them, if you're going to be in ministry, you can't be single. We're not and that's, hold on, hold on. I'm going to let you work with the youth ministry if you're single. You can't do this. If I believe them. What do y'all think about that aspect of it? That you can't work with the youth if you're single. You can't have a leadership position in the church if you're single. Yo. It, that's a tough one. Because we all acknowledge, right? We all acknowledge that. We all acknowledge that Lana got me. <laughs> Lana said, love the purple David. <laughs> so we all acknowledge that we learn from seeing, right? We don't learn from what our parents tell us. We learn from what we see our parents doing. The same thing with anything else, right? Most of us are visual learners. Most people are going to learn. You're not going to be able to tell them to do one thing and them see you do another thing and them not question it in their minds. Some people can. Some people still can learn from that, understand it. But when we have so many people, so many people that I, I'm going back and forth in my head. I'm going back and forth in my head. When we have, when we know that we need examples 
And I think this happens in politics a lot where they say that you have to be married to kind of show that representation. Is it important in the church to say like, hey, to have these positions, you need to be married because these are the examples that we want the kids to see. We want the kids to learn how a man interacts with his wife, how a wife interacts with her husband. We want the kids to see that. We want somebody who's speaking, because let's just be honest, somebody from a single mindset or somebody that's not married speaks a totally different language because they have not had that experience. Listening to Queez about marriage is going to be totally different than listening to me about marriage. I would listen to Queez about marriage more because Queez is married. If you've been married, I'm going to listen to you more just because that's something, an experience that you've had. So therefore, if that does apply and that holds true, then even though it may seem unfair, is it best to have that be one of the, I, I don't know, the, part of the criteria to who can have a leadership position in the church? Like, how do y'all look at that? I don't know. Let me... um. Let me get to the rest of these comments and then we'll move on with this video. Uh, do, 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 do. Alana wrote, Ant, totally agree. Your version is a strong mindset, which many are lacking. Um, the strong mindset will eventually prevail. Um, Ant wrote, wait. <laughs> I love the purple. Um, Ant wrote, he disagrees with something. I'm sure he's going to tell us um, exactly what it is. Maya wrote, I disagree. If you're going to be inappropriate, you will do that single or married. I disagree. I disagree. And I know Maya is referring to um, whether you're in a relationship. I think you're referring to the distraction piece, right? When they said marriage is a necessary distraction. I, I just believe that. And, and, and see, it's not necessarily about inappropriate. And it's not necessarily about what's inappropriate because different things are deemed inappropriate. And I'm glad that you brought this up. So Maya is talking about the marriage being a necessary distraction. And what I said as far as when you're in a relationship, it prevents you from maybe doing some other things that wouldn't necessarily be aligned um, or, or that you would see best. Put it this way. You may, if you're not in a relationship from 18 to 25, you may go around, you may say, hey, I'm not in a relationship as a, as a young woman. It's okay for me to have casual sex. I'm not in a relationship. Um, clearly, I'm going to be having sex with more partners probably in that time frame than if I had a relationship that entire time or if I had two or three relationships at a time, whatever it may be, if I'm not in a relationship, I would think that most women these days within this culture and how society influences us are more likely to have, let's say, a lot more partners, sexual partners. So that may not necessarily be deemed inappropriate while you're 18 to 25. If you're 23, if you're 25, when you're 25, you're not necessarily looking at that as inappropriate behavior. But then when you get to 35 or you get to 40, then you may look back on that behavior and say, you know what? That probably wasn't aligned where, where I needed to go, but I just wasn't seeing things at that particular time. So that's my point as far as it may not be inappropriate. Like that's for everybody to judge. But what I'm saying is it's going to put you in a position to where you are now. You just have more exposure. You just have more exposure. Um, so Maya wrote, better to not get married, to be a trophy, just to be in leadership. Yeah, Maya, you may be a little delayed. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that, you know, obviously, you know, you don't want to just get married to become a trophy. But I think what we've all agreed on is the fact that we haven't been coached. We haven't been raised to be married. So therefore, regardless of us trying to move towards that, we're not going to be prepared. So therefore, we're going to have to we're going to have to keep touching the stove. Why does everybody have to keep touching the stove? Why can't we teach the next generation like, hey, you see this scar? I touch the stove. This is what you don't do. Or, hey, you see this amazing um, this amazing thing over here. This is how I got it. Learn from me. You don't necessarily have to go through all the things yourself. So I, I heard a quote where it said a smart person or uh, a smart person learns from their mistakes. A wise person learns from the mistakes of others or something. It was something like that. So I don't know if that makes sense, but um, and Queez wrote, yeah, you can't talk about it if you don't live it. I agree. Um, Ant wrote, single is not always the result of poor leadership. Wisdom and experience can come from anywhere and anyone. 
I agree. Um, we're not talking about couples, counselors for kids. We're just talking about leaders, unless I missed when he said um, what they are leading. Yeah, just not even couples counseling for kids. Learning how to actually communicate, you know, with learning how a, how to communicate. If you can learn how to put a condom on a banana, I'm pretty sure that we can teach the kids how to communicate with their girlfriend or boyfriend. If you're teaching them how to have sex, I would assume that we can, you know, teach them like, how do you communicate in this, in this situation? How do you problem solve? When you get upset, what are some things that you do? Who do you talk to? Who do you have guiding you in this particular relationship? Right? Just like we have a coach on the football field, just like we have a teacher in the classroom. Relationships are probably harder than any of those things, and we have nobody guiding us in most cases. So where do we think we're going to land? We're going to land maybe either looking at relationships from a bitter standpoint, not being prepared, not being the best uh, prepared to be a husband, not being prepared to be a wife. And then we, we land exactly where we are right now, which is why people are just not prioritizing marriage, relationships, and kids, in my opinion. Uh, Maya wrote, I agree with that, Dak, but I'm just thinking people will marry anyone um, to be able to get into leadership. Oh, I get what you're saying, Maya. So Maya's talking about like getting into the leadership positions, like with politics or within the church. I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's a problem. But that's, see, that's more of a problem where that's just the insecurity. That's an insecurity. And, and what does that come from? In my opinion, it still goes back from us not being taught those things at a younger age or us not being guided those things at a younger age. It's very hard to play basketball your entire life. You've been playing basketball your entire life, and now you get to college and you want to play water polo. It's very hard to make that transition. It's a lot easier if you've been playing water polo your whole life, or maybe you've been introduced to it at, at you know in some capacity. So now... When you actually want to play water polo in college, you're more familiar with it. We play basketball our whole lives and then expect to just, yeah, it's water polo time and end up drowning. We end up drowning because we've been playing basketball the whole time. We're developing different muscles, different skills, different techniques, different qualities that prepare us for basketball, but have nothing to do with when it comes to water polo. And then we get into water polo and wonder why we fail. So if I was you know, more of a, a Kirk Franklin, or if I was, you know, speaking on these things, mine would just be like, okay, what do we, what do we think that we're going to eventually want? And this is where the, a lot of the elders come in. Our aunts, our parents, our grandparents, family, friends, this is where they can help prepare us because obviously it, it's like going into, I mean, we can't even figure out what we want to major in college. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're, we're not going to be, we're not going to make certain decisions at 15 and 16 with the mindset, like, Oh, I'm doing this to prepare myself for when I'm 30. We need older people, the elders to guide us there. So I think we're pretty much saying the same thing. Kui said, be the change. It starts with me. Practice what you preach, the golden rule, et cetera. Yeah. Okay, I got what you meant. You meant being married into leadership. Yeah. Um, Aunt wrote, right, Maya, I think Kirk is isolating more people than teaching them how and what we need as a culture. That's what I took it as. That's what I took it as. Ah, Tank K, talk to us, Aunt. Um, uh, Maya wrote, I guess I had a skewed view. I was thinking they wanted them to not be single because they don't want them in leadership and dating in the church. That's another, that's another reason. But I'm just talking about it from a, a standpoint of if you're representing like if you're seen, if you're held in high regards and you, we know how kids are with their teachers in school, with their coaches, um, with their leaders in the church, whoever it may be, kids, man, kids will hold them in higher regards than their parents and want to imitate their lives and, and learn from them because they're cooler. They're not their parents, right? So therefore, I, I, I'm I'm back and forth on it. Like I can understand how that would be detrimental in certain ways, you know, where certain people wouldn't get certain positions, but it's just the understanding. It's just a reality that, Hey, in order for us to be properly taught and prepared to, to become significant others, to become um, husbands and wives, then we need that. So it's like, is it okay to hurt the feelings of somebody who's single in a leadership position to hurt their feelings? If it means that somebody else will be in that position who will 
better be a, who will be a better representation for allowing those kids to learn from the life that they're actually living rather than somebody just speaking from a perspective that they can't talk on from experience. That's what I'm saying. Um, Aunt wrote, sometimes it's not a lack of education, but a lack of trust in those teaching, touching the stove. Um, Aunt changed his pick mid chat. <laughs> Uh, the same way the dating checklist was created, we should an OG checklist for self-growth and development. I like that. I like that. I like that. Um, no, he's talking about your avatar. Um, marriage should definitely be pushed, um, but for the correct reason. I agree. I agree. Yeah, it was time, Q. It shouldn't be pushed without guidance or preparation. Agreed. So we all agree on that. So we all agree on that. So wherever Kirk Franklin is, and clearly we only saw a clip, wherever he is, I think we all just agree that there needs to not only be marriage pushed, but it needs to be pushed for the right reasons and it needs to be accompanied with proper preparation. Because if not, we're going to get ourselves in a lot of toxic situations and relationships that are going to be even far more detrimental than somebody maybe just never getting in a situation um, at all. So, all right, let's let's um, let's move on. So speaking of the Steve Harvey type, Guys, we got a, it, I got a funny video that I just wanted to throw in here with Dr. Umar. So I don't know about y'all, 